Well, hello YouTube, it's me Fortmaster, and welcome back to another Kutzka's Art reaction. So yeah, depending on how you look at this title, it could be a little... The title sounds pretty Lovecraftian. You're a dream of the universe. <coughs> Recording signs. <laughs> I had to add that in, sorry. But yeah, um... I've... I... I... I've said this a fair number of times with some of these videos, but this title confuses me. So, but the thing is, look, looking at that, this does actually kind of remind me of something, and going back to the whole Lovecraftian thing about, you know, the universe only existing because the the the, the, the old ones dream it, sort of thing. I mean, Kutzkas are in Lovecraft. Those, that's not something I really thought I'd ever see together, though, then again, that's a connection I myself am only making. Anyway, uh, I really want to get into this, see what they're talking about, and see if I can even make sense of it. So yeah, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Corner video will be leading to my Let's Play of the Day, and with all that out of the way, uh, let's get this thing started then, shall we? Absolutely everything you think about yourself and the universe could be an illusion. As far as you know, you are real and exist in a universe that was born 14 billion years ago and that gave rise to galaxies, stars, the Earth, and finally you. Yeah. Except, maybe not. You may actually not exist for real, but be the dream of a dead universe. You and everything you think exists. Crazy as it sounds, this may be an unavoidable consequence of our best scientific theories about the universe. Okay, this is a bit much. What? Let's start at the beginning. We need to understand three concepts for this idea to make sense. One, the arrow of time. Okay. What distinguishes the past from the future? Put a drop of red ink into a glass of water, and you see the ink spread until it fills the container, but never the opposite. Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, the past happened and the future has yet to happen. That's kind of how I distinguish it. Colored water where ink spontaneously concentrates and becomes a drop at the surface again. Time always seems to flow in the direction in which the ink spreads. But if you take a microscope, all you will see will be a swarm of molecules colliding at random. There are no rules, no forwards and backwards. Every individual motion that happens can occur in reverse. But we perceive a sort of arrow of time that makes things happen in one direction. How does this phenomenon occur? Well, this arrow of time is not actually fundamental, but a matter of probability. When ink molecules spread to fill a glass, there are many different slots of space they can occupy, and therefore many different possibilities to combine them. And yeah, I remember the, I remember the uh, the example I was given on this sort of thing was if you took like a stack of papers, you know, they're ordered from page one to page, you know, however it is, uh, and you just throw them up in the air. There is a near infinite number of ways that those papers can land in any combination, but there's only one way that they can land and be in the exact same order that they were when you were holding them. <laughs> and that's that's basically uh, thermodynamics. <laughs> there are very few ways for energy to be concentrated and a lot more of it to be everywhere. Just like your chances of winning the lottery grow the more tickets you have, the probability that ink molecules will end up filling the glass is much higher than the probability that they'll concentrate in just one spot. So it's not that the ink forming a drop again is forbidden by the laws of physics, it's just extremely unlikely. <laughs> to see it, you'd have to wait about 10 to the power of 100 sextillion years, a one followed by 100 sextillion zeros. If you had this much time to spare, eventually, by pure random chance, you'd see a red blob form again. Actually, with enough time, you could see any shape forming, like, for example, a small, red, soggy brain. I think I think I'm getting an inkling of the direction you're heading within this video, but I but this also reminds me of another like example of forgetting what it was called, but it was another example of something where you put an apple in a box and you seal it and you seal the box perfectly to the point that energy can not go in or out. Obviously, if you watch the apple and you had a and an unlimited amount of time to watch the apple, uh, it eventually it would start to rot and decay, and then the, the decay would just kind of 
you know, evaporate as the remains were, you know, it broke down into simpler and simpler things eventually. Yeah, you know, that sort of stuff. But eventually, if you waited long enough, theoretically, it would be possible for the apple to reform as it was originally. I, I swear, it's that, it's, it's concepts like that is why I would never, never be able to go into physics. Because, I mean, yeah, just saying it out loud, yeah, okay, well, that sounds pretty cool. I mean, if it is a little weird, but then, and you actually start trying to think about it, and, like, it starts to warp your mind. <laughs> okay, let's move on to idea two. Two, the far future of the universe. Our universe was born 14 billion years ago in the Big Bang. It expanded and evolved to give rise to the myriads of galaxies and things. In other words, the universe is kind of a glass of water with a lot of ink doing stuff. It has an arrow of time. But the universe is not a static glass, it seems to be getting bigger at an ever-increasing speed because of dark energy. Basically, everything in it is getting more and more diluted. In about 100 trillion years, the last star will die. Then, few interesting things will happen for the next few decillions, last black billions, hole. and googles of years. Okay, so I, I think I've finally gotten what they're talking about in this video. And it's like, when they say you're a memory of a dead universe, are they literally talking about this whole thing where just in the endless, endless amount of time that spans, even after the heat death of the universe, when like every star and every black hole is just winked out of existence, that just out of the pure luck of probability, the big, uh, all energy just coalesces into a single spot again and the Big Bang happens a second time or how many other times that has happened in, you know, the timeless existence outside of the universe. Eventually, the universe will be a dark place fully dominated by dark energy, a rapidly expanding ball of pure space, almost devoid of matter. You might think that this would lead to the ultimate death of everything, but dark energy has one last surprise for you. Does in a it? universe no. dominated by dark energy, space expands so dramatically that it creates a cosmic horizon around you, a border beyond which nothing will ever be able to reach you, not even light. So for every practical purpose, the universe has become a glass of finite size about 36 billion light years wide, surrounded by an impassable cosmic horizon. Such a universe glass is basically a giant black hole turned inside out. We know that due to quantum effects, all black holes emit a tiny amount of particles, a phenomenon known as Hawking radiation. And so does our inside out black okay, hole. Okay, this is In not the end, going the way I thought it was. This will fill the universe glass with particles again. At this point, so far in the future that giving you a number has no more meaning, we've reached the true final state. The universe has now become a closed box full of particles at an extremely low but finite temperature. And since they have a temperature, they undergo random motions. Or in other words, a glass filled with water and ink and an infinite amount of time ahead. Things are about to become interesting again. Okay, so never mind, I might have been partially right. And fake universes. What do they mean by fake universes? Eternity is a long, long time. So now, well, duh. even the most extremely unlikely things can happen. The fluctuating particles are bumping into each other over and over and over again, creating every combination of particles that's possible. They're like a monkey typing at random on a typewriter. Yeah, Almost Shakespeare. all of the time it types gibberish. But with enough time, eventually it will write the first acts of Hamlet. And with even more time, the complete works of M and M. If ink in our universe glass generates any random arrangements of particles, what could they be? Well, a spontaneous fluctuation could give rise to a planet, or to a galaxy, or even to a lot of them. So maybe our universe has already ended, and all we see around us is a pop-up universe. Not a universe that evolved from a Big Bang, but one that fluctuated into existence by pure chance. And that, like the drop of ink, will only exist for a while before dissolving again. Being random, pop-up universes could be similar to ours, but with funny glitches. In some of these universes, dinosaurs are riding snails. In another, <laughs> stars are made of blueberries. In another, you're wearing a funny hat. Scientists in such universes wouldn't understand those glitches, so maybe the greatest mysteries of physics are just nonsense bugs of our pop-up universe. But not all possible fluctuations of our dead universe have the same probability of occurring. Yeah, exactly. Smaller fluctuations are much more probable than bigger ones. A planet is more likely than a galaxy. But you know what's even way more likely? A human brain. Are you actually just a brain? 
You think, therefore, you exist. But what else do you truly know? In the end, your brain is just interpreting signals from your senses and creating a world that you experience. So technically, you could be just your brain that thinks the world is real. And if we follow the logic of the ink in the universe class, in particular, you could be a disembodied brain that, just by chance, emerged in a dead universe with your complete set of knowledge and memories. This is a pretty bizarre idea, but if we do the maths, it's kind of pretty solid. Let's compare the number of brains inside bodies in a living universe with the number of naked brains in a dead universe. Ah, uh, give me a second. If I think a number of things, I get to 10, 11, 12, maybe 13 things, then my eyes start to glaze over, I have to sit down and eat a Pringle sandwich. <laughs> Drawing comfort as the level bread crushes the curve of the Pringle. Crush, crush, crush. Yum, 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 yum. Oh. So, to say this video is not going in the direction I thought it was, I mean, to repeat what I, that the fact I said that before, so, here I was thinking that they were going to be talking about, like, the probability of, like, after the, like, after the heat death universe, and then just, like, through random chance that the universe spontaneously exists again, and then restarts. But no. This video is about the possibility that I, and or any other person on this planet, may in fact be a literal brain floating in the void of a dead universe literally imagining our entire existence okay let's go really big and imagine that a total of 100 quadrillion humans will live around earth and that the same amount of people will live around every star in the universe if we add this together we get about 10 to the power of 41 brains inside bodies that will exist Okay. However, in a dead universe that has had enough time to explore all possible fluctuations and that will exist forever, the number of naked brains that would emerge is, well, infinite. Uh. So the probability that you're a floating brain is not only vastly larger than the probability that you're a real human, it's so inconceivably larger that we can't even meaningfully quantify the difference. How do you compare a number to infinity? So. Are you a floating brain that exists for one moment in time, then basically forever passes, and then you exist for another moment in time? Maybe not even in that order. Maybe your life happens backwards and you just don't notice. Maybe you've lived trillions of times already. Are you the dream of a dead universe? Really? Like, really? Well, probably not. Well, yeah, but... I... What was I saying about, like, eldritch horror in the beginning of this video? I mean... That... This whole concept... is absolutely terrifying! <laughs> like, I'm not... I am not, like, exaggerating at all. I find this concept really scary, and... I wouldn't, oh god, some, please tell me somebody who's had to have thought of something like this, or at least afterwards of watching this, has to make like a, like a horror story, like a cosmic horror story based on this concept of, you know, like a, a physicist or something trying to figure out why like certain rules of like physics, laws of physics don't work, and then finding out that they're literally just a brain floating in a dead universe. So got three minutes, what else are you going to throw at me, Kutzkazart? First of all, there are a few loopholes. For example, dark energy could behave completely differently from what we think today and lead us to another future. Or maybe okay. our dead universe will be too motionless to allow the creation of brains, even with infinite time. Or maybe the universe will end up dying in another way. Our understanding of the cosmos... Gee, what a happy thought! <laughs> 
doesn't have a solid enough foundation for anyone to worry if they're real or not. Loopholes aside, if you were a fluctuating brain, all the laws of physics stored in your brain would have originated at random and shouldn't bear any relation to the real world. But we just used those laws to prove that you're a floating brain. So even if you believe that you are a floating brain, you'd have to admit that you have no good reason to believe that you are actually a floating brain. Hmm, okay, so this hallucinatory trip might teach us something about our theories about the universe. <laughs> but in the end, it's just a really weird exercise in what you can do with physics. Yeah, An very weird. of what brains and bodies are able to think about. So don't worry, you're not a dream of the dead universe. Probably. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so, hmm. That that was a weird one. That kind of brings up that brings up like so many questions that I am in no way even close to uh, qualified to answer. I oh god! I, as I said before, that would make like a perfect like existential dread based story or something along those lines. That's just oh god! That is so weird. So yeah, um, uh, I still have something else to record after this, but I might have to take a little break just to um, recenter myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Uh, corner video will be leading to my newest Let's Play video of the day. And with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>